Hey everyone, this is Afizullah Masudi and you're watching from Code with Hafiz. I welcome you to the ninth video of this series where we will discuss CSS tables and CSS display. So first of all, related to the CSS tables, we have table borders and to specify a table borders in CSS, we can use the border property. So to show you some examples, let's first create a table. So let's say table and let's create a tier. So this one will be the t table header, so th and let's say for example first name and uh, let's duplicate this one and for the next one let's say last name, so last name and let's create another tr, so let's say td and for this one uh, let's say for example Ahmad and let's create another one or duplicate it so let's say Mahmoud and if you save this get back to the browser refresh now you can see we have this table so let's uh, duplicate it or duplicate this tr so to create some more data so for this one let's say Hafiz and for this one let's say Masudi and if I save this refresh now you can see we have a table but it does not have any borders so let's declare uh, some border for this table so in our style stack in the head section uh, let's say table comma th comma td and now we can declare the border property so 1px solid and if we save this now if we refresh now you can see we have a, a table with the borders now this table might seem small in some cases so if you need a table that should span the entire screen you can add the width property with 100% so to show you this one let's press enter here and let's say table again and this time we want width to be 100% so if we save this and refresh now you can see we have a, a table with the width of 100% now you have noticed that the table in this example is having double borders and this is because both the table and the table header and the table data elements are having a separate borders so that's the reason it is showing double border so to fix this one or if you want a single border table you can use another property by the name of border collapse to collapse table borders into a single border so to show you this one in our uh, tables styling after the width let's say border collapse so border collapse and we want a collapse so if we save this now get back to the browser and refresh now you can see the table is having single border now next up if you only want a border around the table you can only specify the border property for the table element so to show you this one in our visual studio code what I will do is now comment this border for all the elements and now we will declare the border for only the table so let's say border and let's say 1px and a solid so if I refresh now now you can see only our table is getting the border now next up what we have is the table size properties so we have the width and height of a table which are defined by the width and height properties so to show you some examples let's get back to visual studio code and in here what I will do is first of all uh, let's uh, uncomment this code from here and remove the border only for the table and for the table let's say the width is 100% and uh, for the height or for the height of the uh, th only let's say for example a th here and let's declare some height for it so let's say for example 70 pixels and if we refresh now now you can see the table header is getting more height so this is for the height example and this is for the width so this is how you can declare a width and height for the table elements now to create a table that should only span half the page uh, so we can use the width to 50 percent so to show you this one we already have the width property for the table so we can just declare this one 50 percent and now it will take the half of the page so if I refresh now you can see it is taking half of the page now next up we have a CSS table alignment so we have both horizontal and vertical alignment 
for table alignment. So we can use the text align property to set the horizontal alignment li like left, right or center. And by default the contents of the element table header are aligned as center and the contents of the element table data are left aligned. So you can already see in here that the table header is aligned as center uh, both horizontally and vertically. And uh, the other content which is the table data is not uh, centered. So to center this one too, let's get back to Visual Studio Code and in here let's declare uh, styling for the TD. So TD, so let's say text hyphen align and then center. And if we refresh now, now you can see the table data is also center aligned. So for vertical alignment, we can use the vertical align a property to set the vertical alignment like a top, bottom and middle. Well, by default, the vertical alignment of the content in a table is middle for both a table header and table data. So to show you this one, let's get back to Visual Studio Code. And for the TD, what I will do is I will declare some height. So let's say 50 px. And if you refresh now, you can see the table data is also vertically aligned as center. So if you declare this one, for example, let's say vertical align and let's say bottom. So now it will be uh, at the bottom. So you can see now uh, the data is aligned to the bottom. So by default, it is a center bo for both uh, header and the data. Now next up, what we have is the CSS table style. For example, table padding. So to control the space between the border and the content in a table, use the padding property on TD and TH elements. So to show you some examples, let's get back to Visual Studio Code. And what I will do is, first of all, let's remove all of this code. Or let's uh, leave the table class and remove these ones. Now for the th and td, let's say for example th td and for this one let's give it some padding. So let's say 15 px and let's say text align, so text hyphen align and let's say left. And if we refresh the browser now, now you can see the table is having some padding and everything is aligned to the left. Now to make it more interesting, let's get back to Visual Studio Code and let's comment this code in here. And now what I will do is for the T, H and TD, I will declare a border of bottom. So let's say border, bottom and 1px solid and let's say hash DD. So if we get back to the browser now, refresh, now you can see we have a bottom border. Now next up we can have a hoverable table too. So to show you this one, what we can do is for the TR uh, itself, we can declare uh, the hover property. So let's say column hover and, and here let's say background color and let's say for example corn. And if we refresh now, now you can see we are having a hoverable table. Next up, we can have a striped uh, tables too. So to show you this one, let's get back to Visual Studio Code. And in here, uh, let's uh, press Enter. And let's say TR and then column. And then we want to uh, get the nth child. So nth hyphen child. And we want the even rows. So even rows. And then we want to declare some styling for the even rows. And let's say background color. And let's say for example hash 04 AA60. Now if I save this, get back to the browser, refresh, now you can see we have a stripe table. So if we create some more data, so let's duplicate in this TR a couple of times. And now if you get back to the browser, refresh, now you can see we have a, a striped table. Now finally related to the tables we have the CSS responsive table so a responsive table will display a horizontal scroll bar if the screen is too small to display the full content so to show you some examples of uh, this one let's get back to Visual Studio Code and what I will do is for the 
first tier which is in the th so let's duplicate this a couple of times and for uh, this one let's select all of them and let's say for example points and let's duplicate for example uh, tier in here or we have to declare some data so what I will do is remove the extra tiers from here so let's say this this one and I will leave the two so for this one let's duplicate it and let's select it and let's say for example 50 and what we can do is copy all of this so let's copy this and paste it for the other tier too so I hope uh, the th match the td so let's get back to the browser and refresh and yeah we have one left so let's duplicate it so I will duplicate uh, the points and the points in here too so now it will show our table so you can see and to show you how we can make this table responsive let's get back to the visual studio code and we can now uh, declare a div for the table so I will collapse the table here and let's create a div with a class of for example let's say test or let's say responsive so to be more declarative and let's bring the table in this one now in our style tag let's say dot responsive and let's say curly braces and uh, let's say for example overflow overflow x and we want this one to be auto so if I refresh now now we won't see any changes because uh, for now we have a lot of space in the screen so what if I minimize the browser and you can already see that now we have this uh, scroll bar and we can uh, scroll uh, horizontally uh, and see other parts of the data so you can see now we have a responsive table so let's maximize this one now note that on Mac OS scroll bars are hidden by default and only shown when being used even though the overflow scroll property is set so keep this one in mind now finally we have the CSS display property so we have the display property and it is the most important CSS property for controlling layout so we can use the display property to specify how an element is displayed and every HTML element has a default display value depending on what type of element it is so the default display value for most elements uh, is block or inline now block level elements always starts on a new line and takes up the full width available so it is stretches out to the left and right as far as it can now for example the div element the h1 to h6 elements paragraph element or p element form element header element uh, footer element section element and etc are all block level elements now on the other hand an inline element does not start on a new line and only takes up as much width as necessary so for example the span element anchor tag or element the image element and etc or inline level elements now we have the display none property also which is commonly used with JavaScript to hide and show elements without deleting and uh, for example recreating them now to override the default display value as mentioned every element has a default value however we can override it and changing an inline element to a block element or vice versa can be useful for making the page look a specific way and still follow the web standards so a common example is making inline list item or li elements for horizontal menus so to show you this one let's get back to visual studio code and let's remove the table so I will remove it and let's also remove this styling from here so let's create a UL so UL and let's create some allies and let's say for example home and let's say services and in here let's say about 
so if we check out this now in the browser now you can see it is a list so if we override the display property of this ul so in here let's say li and then we want to say display and let's say inline so if we refresh the browser now now you can see they are being uh, inlined so to show you some more examples let's get back to visual studio code and let's create uh, some span tags so i will put an hr here to separate the code and in here let's say span and let's say for example hello world hello world and let's copy this and paste it uh, a couple of times and if we get back to the browser refresh so you can see the span tag is inlined and if we design the span tag so in here let's say span curly braces and let's say display block so now if we refresh now you can see we have a uh, span tags with the block display now next up we can hide elements so we can either hide it using the display property or the visibility property so if we hide the element using the display property the element will be hidden and the page will be displayed as if the element is not in there but on the other hand if we hide the element with visibility property the element will still take up the same space as before so the element will be hidden but it still affect the layout so to show you some examples of this one let's get back to visual studio code and what i will do is remove this styling code from here and let's remove the ul and the hr also but let's leave the span tags so for the first span let's give it a class of so let's say first so for the next one let's say class second and for the third one let's say class third and let's remove the fine uh, the fourth one so in here let's say uh, dot first and curly braces and for this one let's say background a color and let's say for example green and let's duplicate it a couple of times so the next one is second and for this one let's say for example red and the third one is let's say third and for the background let's say blue so if we check out the browser now now you can see we have three elements with a different three background so for one of the element which is the second and you can see it is in the middle so let's declare the display property and hide this uh, middle uh, span tag so let's press enter here and let's say display none so what this will do is hide the element so watch when i refresh the page now you can see the element is gone away and now this element has moved uh, to the left and uh, the hidden element is taking no space but what if we declare the visibility and hide this element so let's say visibility and uh, let's say hidden so for now let's comment this and get back the element so you can see we have uh, now the element so if i uncomment this and let's refresh now so you can see the element is gone away but it is still taking this space so this is the difference between the display none and the visibility hidden property now this was all about this video i hope you enjoyed watching the video and found it useful if so don't forget to give the thumbs up and a nice comment also and if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe too if you want more videos like this so thanks for watching see ya in the next video